What's going on, boys? Let me just give you a quick reality check on today's society in terms of dating and relationships. You get into a friendship because you're similar and you get into a relationship to fuck. And you're right now seeking to get out of the friendship group and into the fuck group, right? So let me just be honest about your situation right now. You have a girl in front of you that you probably wanna have sex with that just said, we're just friends, right? And it was a horrible moment for you not completely understand your situation and all, but just focus on what I'm saying right now and you'll be better afterwards. Are you fuckable? If there was a, a, a girl that was just like you and you were that girl, so you saw yourself from the outside, would you want to fuck that guy? So would you, if you would go out of your body and see yourself and all the things you do day to day, would you find that sexually attractive? If you're in a lot of friend groups of women, probably not. And the same thing goes with women. Why do you friends on a girl? Probably because you don't want to have sex with her, right? If you want to have sex with her, you keep her like on hold essentially. And if you, if you say we're friends once, it's over basically. It's like all the energy is gone now because she just said, you're too similar to me. And that's the problem. The reason you get into a lot of friendship groups of women is because you are too feminine. Back in 2021, where I was a lot more feminine than nowadays, I used to get into a lot of women's friendship groups, right? Because I was still working out, you know, I was kind of looking good. Of course, I wasn't like right now, I'm fucking shredded, man. <laughs> but I was still looking kind of good, right? I was I was going to the beach a lot, right? I, or, or, or laying in the sun a lot. <clears throat> And I had that kind of tan. And I also was looking muscular, you know, looking lean. I can put a couple pictures of me on screen right now. And this is why still girls hung out with me, but it was never like to the point of, yeah, I'm going to have sex with this woman right now. And maybe it was because I was too young, but a lot of guys that age um, have their first time in that age. And I was just thinking to myself, well, how do they do that? How do they get out of this French friendship group? And a year later in 2022, I started self-improvement and a guy named Hamza, a big YouTuber, told me, hey, you are way too feminine. You need to do more masculine things. And this is exactly what I'm going to teach you today, how to become more masculine. Because it's like with magnets, with magnets, right? Magnets also... Um, find like opposites attract each other, right? Feminine attracts masculine, masculine attracts feminine. Feminine doesn't attract feminine. If you're feminine, no woman on this planet is going to be looking for you. A woman is always, 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 always looking for the masculine part because you have to imagine it like this. The woman is the ocean. The man is the ship. Without the ship, the ocean doesn't have a point. Like, why is there an ocean? Just to look good, right? But the ship also has no point without an ocean. Like, what is a ship going to do on dry land? Nothing, just stand around. So you need women in your life. And you need women with a lot of feminine energy in your life. You're probably doing the good stuff because you still have women around you. If you have, if you're in a friend zone, you probably hang around with a bunch of women, which is the first thing. Like if you're always around them, you're going to adapt to them, which you shouldn't do. I'm not saying you shouldn't be spending time with women and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do this, but doing it too much will basically make you more feminine yourself. And also, you have to just think about all the things that are discomfortable to do that feel bad in the first place, but good afterwards. This is called delay gratification. And this is just a quick guide, you know, if you want to dive deeper on delay gratification, I recommend the guide that is right there. It's probably going to help you. Um, it's, it's a guide called Why Discipline or Why Being Disciplined is So Hard for You. It's a very good guide on dopamine detox and all these things that you probably should be focusing on right now. 
and in it it basically says everything that is discomfortable now but feels good later that basically makes you grateful for what you've done is good for you and everything that is vice versa so everything that feels good now but that makes you feel ashamed later is bad for you and this is what you basically need to do you need to write down all the things you do and simply say instant or delayed so what you're going to do right now is you're going to get out a piece of paper and a pen and you're going to write on it all the things you do in the day and you're going to write instant behind the activities that feel good right now but bad later and write all of them so jacking off is one of them eating junk food is one of them um working out is delay gratification meditation is delay gratification and you're going to write down everything you do instant and delayed behind it and what you're going to work on for the rest of your life now or for as long as you want those benefits i'm assuming you want the benefits forever so for as long as you want the benefits you're going to do this and what you're going to do is you're going to write down as many things that you do for delay gratification as you can and the goal is that we delete the instant gratification activities completely and only have a list of delay gratification things so if you for example have a list right now of okay i jerk off i go to the gym which is then delay gratification and i eat cake this is not everything you do in your day so really write down everything right what you usually eat is it sweet or is it full of protein is it healthy or unhealthy do you even know what's healthy or unhealthy i doubt it um but you just write down everything and what probably is going to happen is you're going to have more instant than delay gratification activities and this ruins you as a man it makes you ashamed of what you do like I said, the feeling that you have more is the feeling that you are going to amount to in your life. What I also recommend is to start doing a gratitude journal. In that gratitude journal, you're going to write down all the delay gratification activities that you did in that day. And you're going to write this down every single evening and every single morning. Why? I'm going to tell you now. You're going to write it down in the evening because then you're just gonna write down everything. And in the morning, you're gonna write down all the things that still stayed in your mind. Because with sleep, emotionality goes away from a lot of things that happened in the past day. So you're gonna only write down the things that were really important. So you're gonna write in the evening, you're gonna write three things that you're grateful for. And in the morning, you're gonna write down as many as you want or reverse actually <laughs> you're going to write down as many things as you want in the evening and three things in the morning and that you're going to do every single day now even for the rest of your life or for as long as you want the benefits because then you're going to think okay this activity gym made me grateful yesterday and it felt good writing that down i felt like a sense of pride within myself i felt good that i have done this hard workout where you can th you can write things down like i was grateful for today's workout or i was grateful for learning this today for learning this skill for achieving this goal for reading the page in the book that i always wanted to read and you could just write this down and just think oh I'm actually kind of proud of what I've done today. I feel grateful that I did this. And you're gonna sit there with a smile and the base feeling you're gonna to amount to, right? The thing you're also going, you're always gonna be drawn to is then gonna be gratitude. Now, how does this impact friendships and friend zoning? You see, if you make a lot of progress on yourself, you become more and more masculine because when you become good in this thing called self-improvement which i basically just sold you into you start getting better mental health so you start having less overthinking which is going to lead to more talking to women without having like oh what, what am i going to say to her what am i going to say to her which is also good for having not many friendships and many relationships with women um and also you're gonna be like more focused, right? Just, it just happens to be that if you think more about the things you do in your day, you're putting more value on them. 
and more focused and more goal driven is going to put together a plan that is going to make you want to help people. And suddenly the stranger that feels bad on the bus or the mom that needs help with her kinder wagon, you're going to help them because when you have a full cup and your cup is short before overflowing with good mental health, basically, you will want to pour from that cup and it will feel good for you to pour from that cup because you know how to fill it up yourself. And then what you're going to do is you're going to first pour to the people who know you, right? You're going to be nicer to your family, nicer to the women around you, nicer to the men around you. You're going to be a better energy person, which also makes you more attractive. And then, then you're going to try to spread the messages you've learned. So hopefully you now realize where I'm going with this right now. So the tips collected is do what's hard and make yourself feel grateful for having done that, for having the discipline to stick up for yourself and to say, no, I'm not settling for this instant gratification. I'm gonna do the delay gratification things. Just a little phrase that I learned back then and that helped me massively was simply masculinity grows through discomfort. Say it with me right now if you want to. Masculinity grows through discomfort. It pretty much basically says what I've just told you in the past 11 minutes. And I just wanted to emphasize this today because I just felt the need for me taking my personal turn on people having less of a friendship between men and women because let's just be real, no man wants to be a texting buddy of a woman we want to fuck when we see a woman. Uh, when we see a girl who is attractive to us, we want to have sex with that woman. There is no way to deny this. And if you clicked on this video saying, I don't want to have sex with her. I just want to be in a relationship with her. The two things go hand in hand. You will realize that as soon as you have been in a good, healthy relationship. A good, healthy relationship these days always and really always contains one thing and that is sex. Men and women need this to be polarized and they need this to have a sense of power disbalance between the man and between the man and the woman. And this leads me right into the next thing. You need to be strong and look big. You see it, you've seen it probably. I'm not exactly the small build, right? I'm pretty strong. I've been benching in the gym like um, a week ago I hit three 320 or 315 I can't remember it quite but I think it was 320 in the gym you can also watch that on my channel if you want to <clears throat> and so I'm a strong guy and this is very important because if a woman thinks she's equal to you that is always bad and I know I'm gonna sound sexist for this I know we're not supposed to say this but it just is like that if a woman thinks she is equal to you, if a woman thinks she's equally as physically strong as you, she is gonna try and fuck you over at some point, right? She is gonna say, oh yeah, we're just friends because she has nothing to fear. And I'm not saying that she that she should fear you and that she should be having the sense of, oh, he's gonna smack me in the face if I tell him this, but in her subconscious brain, she thinks like, this man is strong, right? He could carry me through hard times, right? If hard times hit, he's gonna be there, right? He's gonna be strong enough to maybe carry me and my baby that we have to gather over a river if he needs to, right? He maybe is gonna have the strength to run into a burning building and, 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 and rescue me 